Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm asking a simple question. Should you be lagging your putts or should you be giving them a chance? It's the age old question, isn't it? Should you be aggressive with your putting, giving the ball speed so that it's not gonna be moved by the slope or uh, change in direction by some imperfections in the green or should you be lagging the ball up to the hole? Never up, never in is the old saying that I always heard. So my entire professional life I've been really trying to hit the golf ball probably too hard when I'm putting. The reason for that is that if you actually look at the physics of how a golf ball falls into the hole what's actually happening is that gravity has got a certain amount of time to pull the ball down into the hole. And in order to get the ball to actually fall into the hole, half of its circumference has got to be underneath the hole's depth. If you can do that, then the ball will, hold, will, will go in the hole and stay in the hole. If, however, the ball is traveling too fast and it hits the side of the hole, so that the whole ball can't fall into the, half the ball can't get into the hole, then it will lip out. So basically, the, ball, the hole is getting smaller the faster the ball is, is actually traveling. And if you look at this kind of comparison here, you can see that a normal hole width is around about, well, not around about, it's exactly four and a quarter inches. And that gets progressively smaller the faster the ball is traveling. To make it a bit easier to understand rather than giving you actually mile an hour readings for the ball speed, if you just think about a ball rolling past the hole, how much energy would it have to have to roll past the hole? If it's going about a foot past the hole, then the, the hole shrinks to around about 2.6 inches. If you get it uh, rolling two feet past the hole, that means it's got real speed when it's hitting the hole and you don't hit the center of the hole, it's under the half of its width. So the hole is getting smaller the faster the ball is traveling. So it must make sense not to hit the golf ball too hard. So what is it that's getting people to still be very aggressive with their putting steel? Well, a lot of it is basically best down to your mates who are basically giving you a hard time and maybe yourself giving yourself a hard time when you see the ball rolling on the perfect line and it's stopping before it reaches the hole. And that really can upset you, to put it mildly. But it really shouldn't. In the past, we've talked about dispersion patterns. And if you are looking at this dispersion pattern in putting, it's usually in the length, it's not in the width. If I give a total beginner a putter and a ball, they'll probably get the ball traveling more or less towards the hole, but they'll have real problem controlling the distance that the ball rolls, either past the hole or stopping before the hole. And the big trick is to make the hole the center of your dispersion pattern. And this means simply accepting that some balls are gonna to be too short and some balls are gonna to be too long. And if it's a 50-50 split, then more or less the ball is the center of your hole and you are going to stop hitting that really destructive thing they call the three putt. The three putt is simply one shot too much, but it's something which is difficult to get out of your repertoire. In fact, if you look at the statistics, the tour professionals are hitting one three putt per round on average. Sure, they'll have days when they don't three putt, but they'll also have days when they three putt a couple of times. Now, this is obviously dependent on how close they're hitting the ball to the hole, but basically it means putting is difficult. And if you can control the distance that the ball is rolling and get that ball rolling within a certain distance to the hole where you are sure of holding it, then you're going to get rid of the three putt. Statistically, everything under three foot should really go in the hole. And this is the only place where a hobby golfer can compare themselves to a tour pro. You don't need any particular physiological uh, advantage in order to be able to putt well. Every one of you should be able to make a putting stroke, move a club 10 centimeters or a couple of inches back and through and keep the 
the face square to the target line. But as we can see, even in professional golf, a lot of people struggle with this. So how would you then go about actually uh, practicing it? Well, it's all about basically setting up different kind of challenges for yourself. The first thing to understand is that there's really only two different ways to control the distance of the putt. And that is with the length of your swing or the speed of your swing or a combination of both. Now, I know there's guys on the PGA Tour actually measuring swing length and actually saying, well, if I take it back uh, five inches, it's going to go five yards. Now, that might be great if you're playing the same speed of green every week, which a lot of tour professionals are doing, but your hobby golfer is going to be playing different speeds of green every day, and even during the day, they're going to change because you just don't get the same kind of perfect surfaces uh, in hobby golf that you get on the professional tour. So I don't think that is a way to go. On the contrary, I think you've got to get deeper and deeper into your own feel for distance and that means allowing more your unconscious or subconscious mind to decide the length and also the tempo of swing based on the role of the ball. I do believe you're gonna have to learn to visualize the role of the ball and for especially the speed that the ball is hitting the hole or rather the speed that the ball doesn't have when it hits the hole, kind of falling with its last breath into the hole and stopping if the hole weren't there in the hole center. Now this could mean, however, that the ball is actually not hitting the center of the hole relative to your direction. It's probably going to be coming in from the side of the hole, especially when you're hitting the ball gently because it is going to take a little bit of the slope and come slightly in from the side. So one of the first things you want to be visualizing is the direction that the ball is going to hit the hole. Don't visualize a ball hitting the hole from the front all the time. Imagine it coming in through a side door. The next thing is basically getting that speed right. And quite honestly, this is trial and error. You want to be visualizing the speed that the ball takes off from the putter how it slows down over its run and then falls into the hole at the end. It's similar to if, similar to if you were bowling a ball, if you roll a ball underarm, would you think about how far you take your arm back or how s quickly you swing it through? No, of course you wouldn't. You would be visualizing the skittles at the end of the, of the, um, at the end of the alley and then you'd simply roll the ball. And if the first one was too fast or offline, you would concentrate a little bit more on the next ball and unconsciously the, the, the swing would change. There is really no simple way of practicing this apart from just trial and error. But what I do like to do now is basically get a couple of balls or a couple of markers at the side of the, of the hole that I'm aiming at and then basically try and get the ball to actually stop not on the hole but basically to the side of the hole at about the the height of the two balls which are actually each side so you can actually see that i'm able to get the ball quite easily to stop in the height that i actually want it to stop and this isn't by standing there and thinking about mechanics this is all feel and it's not coming because I don't practice this a lot of times on the contrary it's coming because I practice this an awful lot and you ought to be practicing it an awful lot as well just a short one today to get you on the ball on the putting green before the season starts try and get away to somewhere where you can find a decent putting green that's in good condition to practice this and get as many exercises going as you can in order to get a feel for that distance. Don't forget that the ball will be rolling downhill, uphill, against the grain, with the grain, across the grain, and each of these things is going to give it a different speed. So it's not enough for you to just be putting it on one hole from one direction um, 
the same time every time and thinking that you've got all your bases covered. On the contrary, you're going to have to take into account how greens change and how the different grass and growth direction changes from putt to putt. And if you take this all into account, you should actually be able to build a kind of a feeling for different types of greens, different kinds of lengths and directions of putt up to the point where you're actually hitting the, the hole with the ball traveling at the same speed or a very similar speed every time. And only at that point is it, is it gonna help you at all to start reading the direction of the green because only when the ball is traveling at the same speed every time will it actually then be uh, traveling on the same line every time. Quite a lot of information in a short time. If you liked it, hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do so. Big shout out and thank you to all of the patrons who supported the channel for over a year now. Um, it really does help me to get back here and pay for the time and the effort that I put into the videos. Uh, thank you guys and girls for your help. See you next time.